Today's episode is brought to you by Cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, Cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, Cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to Cars.com. It's magical. Hello, friends. Welcome to Mavs Moneyball After Dark. I'm coming to you Monday night following a rather outstanding Dallas Mavericks win over the Utah Jazz, 111-103. to It was the fifth straight win for the Dallas Mavericks, the, probably the one that might feel the best, because as uh, you know, anybody that's in this chat knows uh, well that the right before the game, you know, we found out that Chris Depps wasn't playing due to a mysterious wrist ailment. Um, And it just felt like one of those games which was, you know, going to just be frustrating. Uh, Lots of things that we could have talked about. You know, people messaged me saying, I can't wait to be angry in the locker room, Uh, which, you know, I feel that. I appreciate that. Glad we have a place to, to be grumpy, to get out our feelings. But here's the thing. Mavericks came out and showed out in a really big way. Uh, they were aided by the fact that the normally hot shooting Utah Jazz could not hit the broad side of a barn uh, from distance. They were a rather putrid 12 of 44, which is 27%. But even getting to 27% took some effort. At one point in the game, they were something like 4 of 23, I remember seeing. it was. They had some rough goes of things. It was, it was not good for them. And that just is sort of the way it goes. And the Mavericks, on the other hand, were a rather preposterous 23 of 49, led by really, we should we should really praise Dorian Finney-Smith. He's a guy who takes a lot of grief from me. He was 5 of 12 from distance, and his three-point shooting, I think, really kind of cracked the Utah Jazz defense enough to where they didn't know what to do. Uh, Luka Doncic was very outstanding from the outside. Inside, Rudy Gobert kind of owned him, if we're being honest, but it's not really reflected unless you really dig into the box score. Uh, and then Josh Richardson, uh, <laughs> his five for five from three probably moved his uh, season three point shooting percentage by uh, a margin that's of note. Jalen Brunson was his uh, spectacular self, and the Mavericks really took it to the Jazz right up until about eight minutes in the fourth quarter when both teams were unable to hit a shot. And then following that, uh, there was like a four point or a four minute drought for the Mavericks, which, you know, would be a death knell in most years. But they managed to hold on just long enough uh, and, and really their drag the clock out offense ended up working out. And the Mavericks walked away with a 108 103 victory. So let's hop right to it and get to people. So coming up first. Uh, Brad is asked to chat. Feel free to uh, send your request, and we'll try to get to as many people as possible. Brad, how Brad. are you? Oh, I mean, fantastic. How can you not be? I'm feeling real good. Yeah, you know, I um, was you know texting my buddies during the game, and my friend Javier was like, oh, is this what the offense looks like when you don't force a post feed? Woo! Ten times a game, you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, it was great. Uh, you know, I'm wondering, like, you know, KP plays, do we win this game that well? Like, uh, it was something different, at least to watch. But obviously, you had Finney and uh, um, Richardson going off, which is rare. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the so, so, so to in the chat, we're going to talk about two things you talked about. In the chat, Dr. Sager just asked, why was KP out? He's out with a wrist injury. Uh, a mysterious wrist injury, which Rick Carlisle said before the game, it's something he's been dealing with for several weeks. Well, I don't know how closely you guys follow Carlisle's like pregame stuff, but he's said the so-and-so has been dealing with the injury for several weeks, to which I, knowing nothing, don't buy. Because if you're not telling, if you're not reporting on an injury for several weeks, that's some stuff that can actually get you in trouble with the league. So I don't really right. believe it. But so so he was out and and I don't they play a different game with him. Porzingis is obviously very important because the Mavericks had a had real trouble with the Jazz at the rim. It just didn't mm-hmm. matter. 
uh, for once, which was nice to see. And Ooh. then on, on the the flip side, I it's just you know th- this has to be one of these these to be quite honest, like this has to be one of these bullshit games that the Mavericks won, and I'm just really thrilled about it because <laughs> I was I was so prepared to be mad. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I came into this game expecting it to be just like having all my hopes and dreams crushed. So we were playing like just the easiest of Eastern Conference things. And then like you play a real team and I was expecting to get beat by like 20. When I saw KP wasn't playing, I was like, uh, maybe not. But, you know, now we got Melly. So, you know, he's at least uh, guarding one through five, according to Dorian. So here's a fun stat for you. I'm looking at the box score. What if I if I were to tell you that Melly and Kleba each scored zero points? Do you think the Mavericks would have won? I, because I, that's what happened. I saw that. Yeah, I saw Townsend like <laughs> tweeted that, and I was like, "There's no chance." Like, but my, like, man, the energy they bring. Uh, it's like they actually try. It's fantastic. Um, it was like we played tonight. Like we actually were a playoff team wanting to win and said, we will not just lose. Like we just won't. And it was like, just really refreshing to see. This is the team I expected to watch from the beginning of the year until like, we just had a, you know, just total uh, mess of a, I don't know, first half. But yeah. like, this is what I was hoping for us in terms of like a peak thing. Like, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know how many teams like, you know, are going to beat us if we play, you know, with or without KP, but you know, if we play like this, I mean, it's just, I don't, I don't, I don't know how you, well, I should slow down a little bit. I, I don't know how we don't get out of the first round if we can sure. play like this for the rest of the year. Sure. Well, I like it. I like the confidence. I like everybody being happy. Um, the chat is happy, and and someone pointed out that, of course, we're mixing it up talking about KP. That was just kind of going to be a thing. I, 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 we have to at least address it. I really don't want to talk about him too much because I think we should focus on, on the good part because, you know, the, the, the bad part comes just, uh, you know, it's really easy to focus on the other things. But, heck, hey, we're playing the Rockets in two days, so I'm really <laughs> looking forward to a six-game win streak, knock on wood. Yeah. Um, what else you got for us, Brad? Uh, no, no, I think that's about it. I don't want to be too much of a downer, but I feel like that Rockets game is going to be the one we'll lose by, you know, 18, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so sure. <laughs> I, I hate, hate to break it to everyone, but you know, some of us are just broken. And... <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I still remember sitting in high school in, in like the, the, in the early two thousands, like watching Mavs games with my mom and being horrified <laughs> in the third quarter. So like when you have like twenty years of, of being horrified at third quarters, it's understandable. But you know what? Yeah. We should we should revel in this one. If you know any jazz fans, talk trash to them because they get very Ooh. angry. So You know, I I did want to say one thing before I go. Um I, I don't remember the who actually wrote it, but the article you tweeted about earlier uh, the guys post on your site about mm. the Mavs offense was fantastic. Uh, if anyone hasn't like actually gone through and read it, it was just wonderful. I uh, just want to give that a quick shout out because that's what I did earlier today. And it was uh, a, a very enlightening and uh, accurate piece. Well, I appreciate that. I'll shout it out here in a second. Brad, thanks for coming on up. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll talk probably, I'm sure, after the next game. Absolutely. Okay, so the piece that Brad was referencing is a piece by by our our Slovenian correspondent across the globe, Istok Franco, who wrote a piece which I retitled. It's the machinations behind the elite Dallas Mavericks offense. It is a twenty five hundred word kind of tour de force of explainer. I, I in a real world, I would have had him or if I really had my way, I would have had him break this up into like three different things because it's just outstanding talking about coaching philosophy spacing using quotes from a lot of the Mavs assistants that he really dug up it's really smart with a lot of video if you want to learn some things about the why behind what the the philosophy of what Dallas does and what uh, uh, Luka Doncic and Chris Stapp Porzingis are able to exploit within this system I really recommend reading it um all right I'm going to bring up friend of the program Matt Phillips Matt, how are you? I know the last time I, well, you were on one of these, you, you were at work and you weren't able to talk. So what's going on? Matt. 
Matt must have muted himself. So we'll bring Matt back up in a second. That's okay. Um, all right. Coming up next then is Henry. Henry, what's happening? Yo, Kirk, can you hear me? I can. All right. Um, yeah, I was not going to miss this room after after this game. Um, <laughs> I mean, this was our third game in four days, and the way we came out and just really – thrash these guys from start to finish i was just not expecting this like i I tweeted you earlier like the josh richardson game like did not definitely did not see this coming feels good right it's it's good to be you know it's it's funny i i'm i'm by myself in my house for the first time in like 400 days because my wife and son are gone and i was just like i was really prepared to be mad by myself and enjoy being mad because there's just something about that (laughs) with sports and now I'm just like, hey, here we're going. You know, I wrote a, I wrote an article. I'm here talking to some friends. This is this is a delight. And the Richardson stuff, I feel like he was due because that poor guy has just been stuck in quicksand. And that shot looked good. It I did. Mean, I just, it's so weird. His catch and shoot just variants where it goes from looking like a knuckleball or it curves in the air to this. I'm I'm just I'm really pleased with him. Uh, what else did you did you like from the game? Um, I liked, man, that, that little moment between Luca and Gobert, uh, was it in the third? I can't remember when it was, but Luca just coming back and just like draining two more step backs, like immediately after that, I was just like, Ugh, that's what I like. He's a mean man. It's one of those, <laughs> I, he just, the shot looks, if I were, uh, if I were better at my job, I would, I would do some video analysis of the way his shot looks, but you remember over the summer, he was posting videos of him shooting with like one of those like high school shooting machines that yes, I remember with uh, when he had like bands around his waist and stuff or something. Yeah, and I'm just like looking at this and I'm like, what is this? Because number one, it's like he bought this thing off eBay. It showed up at his house, and we're supposed to be excited about this. Well, the answer was yes, we are supposed to be excited about it because it's because it's working. Um, so just for fun, Josh Richardson before tonight had made a grand total of where is it 59 three pointers so he made five more tonight <laughs> 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 so he he made what is the math there like like five of it's 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 a pretty pretty preposterous uh, percentage i'm very very pleased with that so well yeah what else we got henry cuz uh, we've got uh, people are excited yeah, to watch uh, just uh, just real quick when, going back to luca just real quick for a second when will other players realize that you can't get in his head like if you mess with him he's probably just going to bust your ass for another 20 25 points like i wonder when the league will just realize that you can't mess with him like that Two to three years, honestly i think that that there's a reasonable I don't know. The let's just say the guys that came between Dirk and probably for you know in the early two thousands, there's enough of a reputation of of guys that weren't ready for kind of the mental aspects of the NBA to where there's just an assumption among a lot of American players that these guys are soft and and there just aren't many of them anymore that are soft. I love these European players. They're they they play in such different high pack pressure situations. Um particularly like Luca. I mean, Luca's played in bigger, scarier, I mean, maybe not bigger, but probably more intense gyms overseas when he was 18 than anything he's seen in the NBA today. So, so I don't, I, 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 I hope people keep trying to get in his head because he just gets angry and it's really fun. Uh, all right. I'm going to bring up uh, Michael. Michael, how are you? Michael, you able to talk? You got the mute on. That's okay. Michael will try to bring you up back here in a second if you have any opportunity. Okay, coming up next then, I have, I'm have i going to bring up friend of the program, Matt Phillips, who is able to talk now. Matt, what's up? Okay, hopefully this works now. Yes, um, you I'm sound covering, good. Yeah, I'm covering a shift in a jail, so it, uh, it, <laughs> it struggles. Um, <laughs> the, the signal is not real good in the jail. Sure. Um, so, one, I uh, just mentioned it in the chat. I looked it up, and this is before today. But Jalen Brunson's true shooting percentage is 64.1, and Steph Curry's is 64.2. That Spicy. guy is having a ridiculous offensive season. Absolutely I love ridiculous. That. Uh, I, I just feel like every shot he takes in two-point range, I don't like his Three-point shooting's been, been not – like tonight it was great, but the last five or six games has not been outstanding. His two-point shot, anything in like that eight- to ten-foot range feels like it's going down. He's so strong, and he is so crafty, and everything he gets through. Also, um, going with that, so this is going to sound weird because he had no points, 
and some of the jumpers just looked really terrible. But Nicola Melli, the word I would the word I used to describe him in the the game thing, he's just competent. Like he just everything he does other than the jumper today, he just he's competent at basketball. And I, for us that is a big positive. Like when you're used to Willie Cauley Stein and sometimes Powell and sometimes the other guys, it helps that he just does, he's in the right spot. He knows how to pass. He plays really good defense, which I'm shocked by. Yeah. And he, but he moves his feet well. He just, everything, like I said, the word I would use is he's just competent. He's not great. He's not a star. He's it, solid. I really enjoy watching him play. And not only because I get him confused with like his beard. I don't know if you guys have seen a photo of a friend of the program, Dalton Trigg, but Dalton has this just magnificent, wispy beard. And Melly has the same thing going for him. So when I see the play, I'm just like, why is Dalton on the floor? But it's it's really something watching his effort at the moment. And, and the kind of confidence Luca is showing in him is really fun. Uh, the fact that he missed all those three open threes in the fourth quarter was really funny. I'm glad it didn't bite Dallas in the rear. But I, I do. I enjoy watching him play at the moment. Somebody in Mavs Moneyball said he is uh, giving – He I think it's Jordan Brodess who said he, he's he, – that Melly's giving him extreme, uh, God, Brian Cardinal vibes, which I, I, yes, I like that. Comp. I see it. I see it. Um, the other thing I would say today is that, and it worked and he had a good game. So I'm, and we're really hard on him. So I'm absolutely not trying to be, this is a super positive day, but one of the things going forward is, and the, he, they couldn't today, but if Dorian Finney Smith can make it to where they can't put Gobert on him, which it turned out not being a good thing for them to do it today. That is a huge advantage for us. Absolutely huge. I wrote because about they, this, yeah. and it's it's going to make or break what they do in the playoffs. And and I don't want to – I mean, there's just enough data right now to show that he's going to have to have outlier performances. He just is. I mean, since uh, – Falwell said something to the fact that since the birth of his son, he's shooting like 44% from three, which is hilarious. And he had an upswing in the first part of the 2019-20 season where for the first 30 games, he shot like 40% from three, and then it, it tapered off enough, but it didn't really affect the bottom line of his numbers where he shot 37% on the year. But – it just becomes a thing because unless you're shooting eight or nine times a night, like he shoots four and a half times a game. And if he hits one, I don't know. It's, it's just sort of the difference where either they need to get him more volume or I, I just don't know what to do with him because he's so, so important. Like he was the reason the Mavericks won tonight's game. Like he broke the thing open. Oh, absolutely. And one of the things is, is he did some stuff off the dribble today, which is a huge thing. And for a long time, Mavericks fans, if you remember, one of the things that really opened things up for Dirk is when Josh Howard got to where you couldn't put centers hmm. on him. If you go back and watch the 2005 Houston series, one of the giant things about that series that, that made it so close and made it so dangerous for us that no one remembers is that they guarded Josh Howard with Yao and, and Dikembe for huge portions of that series. So everyone complained about Dirk not being able to punish threes when he was young. But one of the big things, too, is that Josh couldn't punish fives. And that is a huge difference when you have guys like like KP that obviously they absolutely do not want Gobert on KP. Like while the link gives him trouble and stuff, they don't want Gobert having to deal with the the jump the high volume jump shooting that KP is going to do. That is so, a top notch observation. I really like that. So that is just that's something like I said, and just all you have to, it doesn't have to be like obviously we don't want him to become Luca where he just he just tries to do everything off the dribble. But just every now and then, just attack a closeout when it's a big guy like that. And and Gobert is obviously one of his underrated gifts is that he has much very, much better short area quickness than people think. It looks awkward, but he recovers better. And Dorian did a really good job tonight, and that is a really good thing going forward. I like and, it. I, yeah. And that's pretty much all I've got is just other than that, and Luca was insane. I and appreciate I, you coming up. All right, That's, I'm gonna be think. I'm gonna be thinking about that Houston thing for a while. I might have to not work for an hour tomorrow and go go seek out some of those series. Um, all right, let me see here. Coming up next, we got friend of the program, Doug Brodess. How you doing, Doug? Doug, you there? Hit the unmute button. There he is. Hi, Doug. Hey, how are you doing, Kurt? Good. You know, one of the things that is crazy about uh, Melly's game is 
Uh, obviously, would love to have him hit a couple of those shots, but he's always in the right position. And as much as that's not a real sexy thing to, to talk about a player, on both offense and defense, he's where he should be, which helps everybody else on the court. And I think that's that's probably one of the things that uh, I appreciate about, about his game so far since he's been with the Mavs. Sure, sure. I mean, there's, there's, you know, in the article today that that uh, I referenced earlier from his talk was just talking about the the kind of what the Mavericks are hoping to build in terms of players who are able to make decisions for themselves and and the more the Mavericks play together and this this just kind of happens over the course of years you just get these these guys don't get as many minutes together as you might think and now that they've kind of they they sort of seem to have this eight and a half man rotation which hopefully like JJ Redick will make a ninth or so you know where it's like you can play guys seven eight minutes and they don't burn things down and like the it's it's these little things that are making a big difference I mean I keep coming back to the fact that the Jazz were ice cold from three. That's just not going to happen every night. But it's 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 a fun it's it's a nice observation where you can take away these things that I think are are, are possible to replicate in other games. And I think that you know the thing that Melly does uh, again, it, which doesn't show up in stats, is that uh, he does not. It, it the ball is moving as soon as it hits his hand. He's he's not. It doesn't stop with him. It doesn't stick on him. And so. I think that's another thing that really helps when he is in because if he gets the ball, it's, you know, again, in a good way, it's either a shot or the ball's moving. And that's, and to me, that's a, a great thing for a guy like him to be you know, doing for the Mavs as he's on the court. Sure. One, other, one other quick observation. I was really impressed that, you know, the Mavs were – uh, out rebounded, not not by a great uh, margin, but were out rebounded tonight, and they only shot eight free throws. And those are two things that usually have a big impact on uh, on a game. And so, from that standpoint, that points to even more so of how uh, the Mavs really made Utah pay from their ball movement, uh, their shot making, those types of things. And so, it really was really was a great great game to watch. Yeah, the refs were. Um... I will say inconsistent, but uh, that seems to be the case whenever the Mavericks play at the American Airlines Center this year. Don't know what it is. Maybe it's the owner sitting at half court yelling at the refs. Who knows? <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I, as always, Doug, I appreciate you coming up. Well, thanks for having me. Sure thing. All right, coming up next, I'm going to bring on, we're going to get through as many people as possible. Brandon, how are you, Brandon? Hey, Kirk, I'm doing pretty well. Can you hear me? Yeah, you sound great. All right. Yeah, um, I just got a couple of quick things. I mean, everybody I know is talking about Melly. Uh, I thought he was just going to be a throw-in. I'm honestly, this is no longer the JJ Redick trade to me. This is the Nico Melly trade, yep. and JJ was the throw-in. <laughs> yep, until he proves that. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, just watching him, and I mean, Dodo almost always brings it, but I mean, there are times, and I mean, the two Utah games earlier in the season were great examples where this team just doesn't play hard. But ever since Melly got here, I mean, everybody, it seems, just plays hard the entire time, which I really actually appreciate to see for once. I agree. Well, the ball movement thing, I don't know. So I, I, I spend a fair chunk of my day, as everyone knows, on social media. I also look in the, the Mavs Moneyball comments, and there's a – fair amount of complaining in both platforms about how like the stickiness w in terms of the ball and Lucas hands mm -hmm. has kind of a, a, a downhill effect, which can result in these guys standing around. The ball's been moving a little bit more since melly has been on the team. Hope oh, Luka notices sure. that. I mean, like KP is going to take some, some strays, even though he didn't do anything tonight because he really likes his post-ups and whatnot. But you know, it, it, the ball needs to move more for the Mavericks. That is the thing I, I hope that they investigate as as the year or as they head into the off season about potential players, those sorts of things, where you want guys that are going to move the ball. It is why Lonzo Ball should be is is kind of like my my current basketball thirst trap, just because mm -hmm. of the way that he. I mean, and he hit eight threes last night. But that's neither here nor there. But that's sort <laughs> of the that's just sort of the idea, and I, I I think that's really like playing hard is a skill. It is, it is why Dwight Powell always gets onto the floor, because he plays hard. So I, I like that thought. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then just last thing here. Um, I'm, it, ever since it came out, it was an article on The Ringer. I don't even actually remember who wrote it. 
but it was it was a really good article about just the variance. Or I shouldn't say the variance, but the difference in three point pointers making the difference in games much more frequently than it ever has before. And I mean, just taking a look at the stat sheet, obviously don't want to put any downers on this game because I no, think but it's the shooting is why they won. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> the, the jazz, the jazz shot 27% from three and the Mavs almost shot 47% from three. Yeah. Almost that's... doubled up the amount. So it's hard to beat, hard to beat. I, that, that, I agree with you entirely. Well, thank you, Brandon, as always. Appreciate you coming up. Uh... Thanks for having me. Okay, coming up next, and now we're at a firm 100 people in the room. Thanks, guys. I enjoy this. So coming up next is Andrew Bentley. Andrew, how are you? Good evening, Kirk. Doing quite well. Uh, first off, I'd like to apologize to Jalen for jinxing him on his free throws tonight for saying it's how key be later this season. That's okay. Uh, but Harp the, jinxes somebody yeah. every time they shoot. Uh, yeah. Uh, but the key, the key stretch of this game was the first five and a half minutes of the fourth quarter where Luke is on the bench. Utah finally explodes offensively the first time of the whole game, and the Mavs don't crumble. We never drop below a double-digit lead, and by the time Luka comes back in, we've only given up three points of an 18-point lead. So I'll, just... I'll take it. – it felt, you know, it felt good. And even when they went through that four-minute stretch where nothing was going down in the middle of the quarter, it was just exciting to see the fact that there wasn't any change in the team body language – and really the way that they were attacking. So I, I, I like that thought because it, it really feels important as, as they as they keep going through this. Yeah, just the whole team came together and held the lead for once, which, as you mentioned earlier, all those third quarter collapses, just good to see that not happen for once in crunch time. Well, I mean, the, the guys are now a preposterous for me. Seven games under or over 500. Which, if I'm remembering correctly, and I'm going and looking at the schedule as we're as we're chatting here, yeah, we were nine point, and fourteen. Nine and fourteen. So that's a twelve game swing between yep. February fourth and April fifth. Twelve games in two months. I cannot emphasize enough how much that does not happen unless you're the the Blazers. That seems to be the only team. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and that's all I got tonight, Kurt. Thanks, Brent Andrew. Appreciate it. Have a great one. You too. All right, coming up next, we're going to get through as many people as possible, and then I want to go play video games, because I have the house to myself. Jason, what's happening? Jason, is that... Okay, I'm here, I'm here. Oh my god, this is such a great win. I don't know, I'm just so happy. I like, like yes, we shot. Yes, we just shot 20% better than our opponents on three. Yes, there's some sustainable stuff, but... And yes, maybe KP, I'm, I'm not going to say anything more, but... You know what I'm thinking. I know what you're thinking, but I'm not going to mention him. But good game. And I guess one thing that's really interesting to me is that Tim Hardaway had another good game. He always bounces back. It's honestly kind of insane. Yeah, yeah. People better get comfortable with the fact that Tim Hardaway Jr. is going to be wearing a Maverick Maverick uniform next year. I know he's going to get people, he's going to get eighteen million dollars over five years, and, and I'm going to be, be fine with that. And and if I were allowed to sign the check, I would do it. He's just that important to how this team plays. He's I've been for some reason in the chat like earlier. I was I had the phrase confidence man stuck in my head, and like a confidence man is is a con man. So it's not what I was going for, but it, it's just like I love the the fact that the Mavericks have a couple of guys right now, two three guys that are just playing out of their minds, and and every time they go out, it feels feels you know uh, like the Mavericks have an opportunity to win. Where it, you know as recently as two months ago, it was like, well, how are we going to win tonight? And so with the schedule that they have coming up, even though it's still a little bit rough, uh, it, it kind of re- reminds me of the first half of the year. If you know notching these wins right now feel so good and like gives them so little bit of buffer you know they, they're kind of locked into the seventh seat at the moment but with you know what is it 23 22 23 games remaining including like a slate in may which they could just you know win all 10 of them i i, I just I, the mavericks are really poised that they're they're in control of their own destiny they're on you know and that that feels good for once definitely i mean i think just like this one last difficult stretch i'd say before that may stretches these next four games Rockets, Bucks, Spurs, Sixers. If they go two and two, I'd be ecstatic, honestly. And then, you, like you said, they have all those easy games in May. And there is a real chance they get to six. I mean, Portland, they're doing fine, but 
they're going to falter at some point, and the Lakers, they are starting to drop down a bit. So just look at the standings a little bit. I'm starting to get pretty excited about the first round. And we should, and we should. Well, is there anything else you got for us? Oh, I'll get out of here. Appreciate you coming up again, as always, Jason. All right, coming up next, we've got a few more people to get through. Uh, Lance, what's up? Lance, you and your cat, what's happening? <laughs> yes, what's going on, Kirk? I just want to say congratulations on being able to uh, watch the Mavs game at a regular time. I know it's always a rare event for Shoo! you. So, <laughs> uh, Two, I want to say that when I saw the injury report and the wrist injury for KP, I was like, well, this might end, our, uh, end the Mavs winning streak as a uh, – was it the Utah Jazz, the two losses in a row, that kind of triggered the six- or seven-game losing streak? Am I remembering that correctly? That seems right to me. Let me go scroll up. I got the I got the schedule in front. Oh, they had already lost because they lost to Houston, Denver, then the Jazz twice, oh, then the Suns okay. twice. It oh, was a bad gosh. stretch. Yeah, that was – that. I mean, that's what you want to – you know, you want to forget about that kind of stuff. But I will say uh, – I usually don't say a lot of good stuff about Finney Smith on offense, but, man, he, he had Gobert guessing. The whole Which night. was wild that uh, one in the corner where Gobert like jumped past him on the on the corner and and Finney, it's just like that doesn't happen. And, yeah, you know, I, I'm not really a fan of Gobert's game, but the fact is he's a great player. The numbers suggest it. He's you know he's very important to what they do. Like if he were the, if he were a, a member of the Mavericks, the Mavericks would be a title contender. Is, is kind of my thought. So it's it's <laughs> one of those one of those deals where it's, if if you're going to get put into a blender by Dorian Finney Smith, you're yeah, that, that's why – I mean, and you know what? I'm not one of the many people that disrespect uh, the Utah Jazz on social media. <laughs> uh, I I still have some – I don't want to say I have some – I have respect for them. And, and, and honestly, I can't really – they're kind of like the 07 Mavs where I don't know if I should take them serious or not. Ooh, I like that. That's what I think of them. Because I, I, on one end, I think they have a great makeup. I think they have a really good coach, but – I love I mean, Mike Conley. Mike they Conley really, is such they, a killer. Yes, that's true. I just, I mean, they were, they were, it, they were one stupid, very dumb play from Jamal Murray and Gary Harris. Sure, a like one one play away from winning in the first round. You know, so yeah. Well, they've won enough to where I don't think they're going to have to. They're they're going to be a second round team, kind of no matter what, is my opinion. But I really I really hope the Mavericks don't have to play them. They're probably the team I would like to play least, uh, just because when they're in their suffocating defense mode, it feels hopeless. Um, Luca, as I mentioned earlier in this, was really bad from two point range, in no small part because Rudy Gobert was just in his face. So it's it's right. it's tough. But uh, yeah, thanks for coming up. You got anything else for us? Uh, all I'm going to say is I don't know if it's possible because I know the Clippers like to lose a lot of weird games in the regular season, but if somehow the Mavs can make it up to six and, and somehow the Clippers make it to three, I would I would rather have that matchup than play the Suns. Well, hey, I muted myself. <laughs> I like that one. So that's – that's I, I, I don't know. It's all these opponents, you know, depending on what day, you know, what hour of the day it is, I have different feelings on it. But I, I like that thought. The, the, the Nuggets sort of terrify me right now just because of their net rating. But, you know, we'll get to that point. We got a couple of weeks yet until the playoffs, and at least the Mavericks are going to be in the playoff game. So I appreciate you coming up, Lance. Thanks, Kirk. It's always a pleasure. All right. Coming up next, friend of the program, Jesse. What's happening, Jesse? How you doing, Kirk? I'm all right. Thanks for coming up. Um, yeah, I thought, you know, I, you know, we get blown out by teams sometimes, and Carlisle always has a good game plan to come back from bad losses. Uh, I thought, you know, he really did a good job coaching the defense tonight and uh, being able to cut off that pick and roll a lot. Uh, the Jazz like to do that screen to pick and roll action that opens up their, you know, three point shooting, kind of like what we were doing last year. And um, he was able to get a lot of movement by our guys on defense, a lot of rotations. Um, I really liked what we did there. Um, and even when they were hitting their threes, we were in their face and they were just draining them in our face. Like, I mean, that it. I don't think it's a coincidence that all these teams have horrible shooting nights against us. I think a lot of it has to do with 
effort. Um, yes, they do make some like hit some bad shots, but I think that's us getting their out, getting them out of their rhythm. We're uh, we you know we give up the second fewest assists in the league, so we really try to screw up their offensive rhythm, and we play, play at a really slow pace. So I really like that, um, and. <laughs> It's amazing when Dorian Finney-Smith goes off like that and him saying that he uh, uh, <laughs> live on television <laughs> talking about um, uh, Utah shooting the S out of the ball. So that was, that was fun to listen to. The only other point I wanted to make is uh, Luca was 6 for 11 from 3 tonight. Again, he is uh, the second fastest um, player of all time to get to 453 pointers made. Love it. Um, Great so pull. That's amazing. Great pull. Yeah, Luca's in his bag. He's shooting he's shooting thirty nine percent from three since January first. That's just silly. Um, yeah, he also shoots he, uh four step backs a, a game at thirty nine percent. I did was that in Kevin O'Connor's yeah, ring it was. today? Okay. Yeah, that's amazing. I too. like that poll. Um as far as the defense goes, it's it's so I'll just say it to you like say it like this. So I, I've been bothering friend of the program Seth Part now at the Athletic about this and and to date through all the basketball analytics that we have no one seems to know like there is not really such a thing as good three point defense there is three point luck and the Mavericks have been on the bad end of of some three point barrages the first jazz game really comes to mind where i feel like they they hit like 60 of 80 three point attempts uh the, you know the, Dallas has been on the, the the bad end of some some really rough shooting luck for uh periods of games it coincided with the covid outbreak uh, where teams were just shooting lights out now you, there's probably some argument well they didn't really have good players which is true but at a certain point it's like if guys are in your face and and you're you're there. It, the the range of three point shots is 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 really it, it matters is is the thing. But I'm just I'm glad to get one. There there we're kind of at the point in the season where I have stopped caring about what kind of win it was, and I'm just harping on the fact that it was a win. So I'm I'm really into it. Jesse, thanks for coming up as always. No problem, Kirk. Thanks. All right, we're gonna get to a couple more people, and then we're gonna go because I want to go. Uh, Michael, how Hi. are you? Doing good. How are you? Not bad. Uh, well, I started off the day with a text to my group message saying I was going to stop being so reactive game by game, quarter by quarter. No, and that's, that was, that's, that's false. They're wrong. You are right. <laughs> Live in the moment. Yeah, and I was uh, mainly just preparing myself for a letdown tonight. This was before the KP news, but it's kind of turned around to where I am reactive the opposite way to where I think this – this is the defense that they kind of talked about in the off season, and it's got me extremely excited about what, what you know, what's to come. Like this take, I like it a lot, and I actually got a couple of DMs uh, following up because people just kind of send me whatever after games. And somebody asked if we we're going to write about the defense. I don't know how, in some respects, because like KP is such a focal point. But you know, going back to what numerous commenters have talked about in terms of effort. They, they're they just playing harder. And Luca is actually playing better defense. They go through these stretches where you can tell he, he is not there. Like the Wolves game was won after that big Portland win where he just, like, falls into these defensive lapses. And, you know, defense is such a team concept. And when, uh, when one part isn't doing their part, it really tends to have this kind of cascade effect. But I, I think there's something to it. You know, playing the East really helps. Um <laughs> Not to crush those poor Eastern Conference teams, but I would love to play the next four times of the year instead of the Spurs. I think the Mavericks might have a lot better rating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's uh, it's something I'm hoping that we know the Mavs are a team that's very emotional and they can you know play down whenever they're down and play high whenever they're high. And I'm hoping yes. this isn't just a case of extremely positive momentum because it just seemed that you know COVID injury issues at the beginning of the season that they were just kind of playing unmotivated and they seem pretty motivated lately. And I hope it's something that's not just a short term little shriek and something that's actually going to stay, uh, stay going. 
Well, there, there, there cannot be too many upsides to playing a billion games because the Mavericks play, so it's Monday. They play Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Then they have a two-day break. Then they play Sunday, Monday again. Like, there aren't a ton of, of downtime. So it's like if things are going well, there's got, there's some aspect of, of being able to just play into the momentum that I think is important. Um, but past that, it's, it's just it's fun. Uh, well, Brent, Michael, is there anything else you got for us? No, I think that's it. Thanks for having me on, Kurt. Appreciate you coming up. Uh, before I bring a couple more people up, I would like uh, at some point over the next several weeks for the first woman to make the, her, her appearance on Mavs Moneyball After Dark because this dude brigade is getting a little silly. Um, all right, I'm going to bring up Travante. Travante, what's happening? You here this evening? We appreciate you coming up. Hello. There you are. How you doing? I'm good, man. You doing all right? I'm doing great. How you feeling about tonight? You know, we had a uh, second best player on the team, supposedly. Got a little wrist problem. <laughs> like, here you we know, go with this guy. I, I, I like to imagine that he hurt himself doing, like, a burpee or something preposterous. I'm not really <laughs> sure. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, the supporting cast, they, they stepped up big time today. Finney Smith. Was it like probably his best game best all year? Best game all year. 23 points, season high. And he also had six boards and four. Wow. Josh Richardson, what was he, like five for five on three? Yeah, he was five for five from three, and he's only hit 59 threes all season. So we'll we'll take his outlier. Yeah, and I like the defense we had tonight. And another thing, you mentioned Tim Hardaway about bringing him back next season. I'm all aboard with it now. I, I, this dude's been playing unstoppable. Well, he's been playing good for the last two weeks. So I'm going to age myself with this, but Tim Hardaway is, are, is the Dallas Mavericks X Pac. He, yeah. he is he's their their guy who doesn't know how good or bad he is, and that can sometimes really hurt them. But other times, mm-hmm. it's the most fun thing. Yeah, like he's been really good this season. Him and Jalen Bronson, those two off the bench, like the Mavericks, like they found some with those two guys. It's something. I'm really enjoying yeah. it. Brunson is just, you know, to, to keep going with my degeneration X wrestling, you know, analogy. Brunson is is very much Triple H at the moment. I'm I'm a big fan of just watching these guys <laughs> play because Brunson is just so confident. And yeah, I, I I expect to be murdered for my Twitter takes around Game Two when I was like, trade him for anything. So I was tired of his <laughs> live ball turnovers. Yeah, and it's like the Mavericks. If you look back at that draft, Kirk, we killed it. <laughs> Luca, then you drive Bronson. Was well, Bronson second round, right? Yes. Pick 31. Oh, yeah. I'm like, we killed those two picks, but anything else, the Mavs have seen the struggle on. But hopefully, we get the young guys playing like Green and Bay. Hopefully, they come back, well, start back playing soon, more minutes. But uh, yeah, I like what I've seen tonight from the team, though. It was pretty good. Yeah. Well, I mean, basketball and watching sports is supposed to be fun. And though yeah. I'm a big grump, I'm, a, I'm glad that more people are actually enjoying this. <laughs> you got anything else for us this evening? No, nah, that was it, Kurt. Appreciate it, man. Uh, you, uh, thanks for coming up as always. All right. I'm going to bring up uh, Christian. You better keep it brief. Kidding. Christian, what's going on? Hello, Kirk. How you doing? I'm happy. All right. I'm going to be brief. So just real quick. Uh, great game. It was fun to watch and how they did this, but I think this it really shows the team we could be. And the difference between great teams and good teams is that great teams, night in and night out, play with this kind of effort, this kind of fight, this kind of energy. And so I certainly hope we can do that. And I think, uh, you know, this offseason is going to be so important if we're able to retain who we have outside of maybe Jay Rich and bring in either Lonzo or John Collins or, you know, like a difference maker type piece. Uh, We could, I think, really uh, push ourselves into contention if we're able to do that. You know, I'm no cap expert. I know it'd be tough, but hope we can do that. But, you know, great effort tonight. And I hope to see it night in, night out, regardless of the opponent. Well, it's kind of why, you know, some of us, and now I'm talking to a lot of people get mad at me when I do this. They, they tell me in podcast reviews that I sometimes spike my voice. But my, my, my thought was this now is kind of the time where they, they can hopefully over these next several games start playing some people a little more. You know, I would love to see Josh Green. would love to see Tyler Bay. Like you get energy from, from actual people that are not exhausted from playing five games in eight, eight nights. So I, th- I think, you know, 
the energy is just the key thing where it's so obvious when the Mavericks are either, you know, having kind of one of these nights or they've not, you know, when I still remember the Minnesota game where Luca didn't get a nap and then that seemed to affect him for three games is really something. But yeah, Christian, I like that comment. Thanks as always for coming up. Um, all right. Just to get on out of here because I'm going to go soon. Jeremy, what's happening? How you doing, Jeremy? I'm doing good. Uh long time listener, first time caller. Five four two twenty. I just wanna say I'm excited um for uh Rick to come back and he can be our patient. Ooh, so. Yes. Big fan of this. Now I saw somebody in the chat note earlier that we still That was need... me. That was you? Who do... we need to find our Corey Brewer. Corey Brewer is uh <laughs> For anybody who's a longtime Mavs Moneyball reader, it's Doyle Raiders' like favorite player of all time, and so it's like I, I don't know if there's anybody that would be available down the line, but if uh, you know, poor Trey Bark finds himself uh, you know blasted into the sun by some accident at NASA, we might need to find you know somebody else to fill that roster spot. I like it. I like how happy everybody is. This is the way it ought to be, at least now and then. You know, you know, being mad in group therapy is fun, but sometimes you need to have some sort of uh, positive thing to to head out on and i i think we're in that place um note if you've made it to this part in the podcast i i want to um note that josh Bo, uh um mavs moneyball co-editor with me will be coming back probably in the next 10 days or so so those of you who are listening on the podcast and are tired of these specifically and i get all kinds of mixed reviews I plan to be – Josh and I will go back to podcasting normally where we try to get in and out in 15 minutes, and then I will probably host these as well uh, just because we seem to have fun here, and I like talking to you guys. You guys give me ideas. Um, there's there it's there's a sense of community. So we'll be doing these. I'll, I probably won't be doing them quite as often just because at some point I'm going to run out of gas and, and need to, to sleep. Plus, um, I'm trying to prepare for the, you know, I, I, I'm actually the Mavericks biggest off season free agency uh, acquisition because I'm moving back to Dallas sometime in like May or June. So we're trying to figure that out and I just need to do less basketball stuff at night and prepare to move. Anyhow, guys, I enjoy hanging out with you as always. We will be, uh, I'll be posting this, you know, in the podcast feed. Uh, please follow me on this, you know, follow us on Locker Room, follow us on Mavs Moneyball, do all that thing. Please rate and review, even if you give me one star, I'm not going to ask for five, because the reviews are actually um, pretty helpful uh, in terms of getting more and more people to listen to our podcast. Our viewership have has risen in a into a place to where I don't, I don't want to brag about it, but it's let's just say it's more than I was ever expecting. So tonight, I'm probably going to hop offline here, post all this stuff, and then I will be uh, available uh, on Xbox Live. You know, you guys can add me at Kirk35 because I play video games. As always, guys, we'll talk to you soon. This has been a lot of fun. Mavs Moneyball After Dark. Everyone have a great night. 